Houston area visually impaired network Haven Zoom workshop. Today is Saturday, June the 5th. And our topic for today is emergency preparedness. Um, I'm Stacy Gallegos. I serve as the secretary of Haven and I represent the National Federation of the Blind Houston chapter uh, within Haven. And I am kind of filling in Ron's seat today. His son, Austin, is graduating from high school today. So I told him to just go focus on that and we would um, proceed without him. And so with that, um, just a few Zoom logistics. We've been on enough Zoom workshops. So I think everybody should know how to mute and unmute. Uh, if you don't, um, it's Alt A on a, on a Windows computer, star six on the phone. Um, Terrence is here to assist with monitoring raising hands. I would ask that everybody remain on mute um, so what we can give our undivided attention to our speaker. And if you have a question, if you will raise your hand um, and wait to be recognized, and then we'll call on you. And I think with that, um, I will let you guys know one other thing is that we are going to be sending out some additional information with the survey uh, for, for today's workshop, some some things about emergency preparedness and additional resources. Without further ado, I want to introduce our speaker for today, and I'm going to read her little short bio that she sent us. Uh, Deb Nowinski was the founder of the only inclusion in Texas diocesanist. For 21 years, she brought the theater experience to actors of all abilities. While theater was her while theater was her passion, her second passion was keeping people with disabilities safe from the disasters they would experience in Houston. She began this journey after Hurricane Katrina in 2005, seeing that many people with disabilities, the elderly and other vulnerable populations were left unprepared, Deb began to focus on preparedness. A self-proclaimed weather geek, Deb took classes on preparedness so she could go out into the community and share her knowledge. She took her table filled with information to various hurricane preparedness meetings throughout the Bay Area and Galveston on her own, teaching those with disabilities that they didn't have to be a victim and could prepare and save their, their lives became a driving force within her. She became a commissioner for people with disabilities for the city of Houston, commission for people with disabilities and chaired the emergency preparedness committee. She worked with various agencies to help them understand what the community needed in order to survive. She also got the Houston Commission for People with Disabilities into the George R. Brown Hurricane Expo, which goes on every June. Educating, preparing, saving lives. Deb also has brought in medical supplies after the storm to those hardest hit communities. She is not affiliated with any group such as the Red Cross or FEMA. She does this on her own and with her varied connections and her experience. She also wrote up the disaster plan for people with disabilities for Galveston County. She loves talking about the weather and most importantly, knowing that those with disabilities can survive. Just because you are disabled does not, you don't have to be a victim. So without further ado, and that wonderful snippet of who Deb Nowinski is, I'd like to turn the floor over to you, Deb. Good morning. Thank you so much, Stacy. Uh, can you all hear me? Can you hear me, Stacy? Yes. Okay. yes, we can. 
I want to thank everybody on the Board of Haven and everybody who's here today uh, for um, thinking of me to come in and talk about Eva and how to prepare. Um, I'm in Galveston and right now we're about to have a really nice thunderstorm. So there's nice thunder for sound effects in the background going on. So I hope I don't lose power. Um, thank you, Mother Nature for this. Uh, today, I wanna talk to you about how to prepare. Um, I know we've all been through 2020 and if 2020 did not teach you to prepare, I will throw my hands up. Now, I know y'all got the toilet paper. <laughs> I know you were prepared for that. But I also want you to understand that preparedness nowadays isn't just for hurricanes, right? Um, we've been through flooding here, of course, our hurricanes, and the famous February what? Snowmageddon. I know people have called it different names. I'm not going to even say half the names that I've heard because it's not polite. But we were all caught. Everybody was, the whole state of Texas was caught off guard in February with our very rare ice and snow storm on top of a pandemic, on top of the blackout. So uh, that was an experience. And if, and if that wasn't a wake up call, I mean, that was totally crazy. But what the message was, was how prepared are we? How prepared are you? Um, I know everybody's on mute. But I kind of want to ask a question, so I'm going to I'm going to ask if we can do hands. So here's my first question: How many of you are prepared for hurricane season? Some kind of response. Um, how many are prepared? Chuck is prepared. I got one. One. I got two. Laura's prepared. Three. Maricela. If you okay. don't know how to raise your hand, you can you can unmute to simply say yeah. that you're prepared or not. Okay, so so far I've got four people prepared. Four. You guys are giving me a heart attack. I use Siri. Thank you for people who are prepared. Thank you. The rest of you, shame on you. <laughs> All right. Hey, all right, my little Facebook friend. All right, she's prepared. All right. Um, I want to talk to you about specifically hurricanes because we're obviously in it. And we've already had our first named storm. And she was called Anna. And she was in May. Now, remember, hurricane season goes from June 30th to the end of November. Um, so, Okay, what does that say? What is needed to totally prepare? I'm in Central Texas. I'll get to you, Waco and Austin in a minute. Um, so uh, we already had one named hurricane and that was in May or named storm. It was a subtropical. Um, and that was in May and she was in the Atlantic. She was supposed to be June 1st, but hello everybody. Uh, and that kind of gave us a heads up that here we go again, all right? Um, last year, we had 30 named storms. I'm gonna let this sink in. 30 named storms, 14 hurricanes, and I believe seven major hurricanes. Now, not one person in the weather world are professional hurricane uh, predictors, the people, the big guns who come out every year and say, this is how many hurricanes we're gonna get, and blah, blah, blah. They all blew it. They said it was going to be above normal. Nobody guessed the 30, 14. I don't call for I mean, that was just mother nature. So this year, they're also calling for above average, which they're calling for. I think it's 18. Uh, it's a lot. It's again above, above average. It's going to be like 18 named storms, six. And then again, three to four major hurricanes above Cat 3, a Cat 3 hurricane for and a five. But I want to tell y'all something, no matter the number, because obviously last year, who knew it was going to be 30, but they showed up. No matter the number, it just takes one. And that rain with a name on it, attached to it, that really comes to your home, that's all that matters. So it doesn't matter the number, it's just that one. And that one, you best be prepared. Now, I'm not going to get into the, the um, weather climate change discussion with y'all because it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. 
what she's going to do. And Mother Nature is on a tear, right? Because we've seen it. We've seen it with Snowmageddon. We've seen it with our Memorial Day floodings in the past, and obviously with last year's hurricanes, and again, this coming hurricane. So what can you do to protect yourself from all this stuff coming down? What can you really do? Well, you got to prepare. You got to get a plan. And I know the four of you who have a plan, bravo, bravo, but the rest of you, you need a plan. Um, you need a plan before the storm. Now, listen to me. Y'all need a plan before the storm hits the Gulf of Mexico, okay? Before it comes into the Gulf of Mexico and tastes that warm water and blows up. And it's a pinball at that point. It could go Texas. It could go Mexico. It could go poor Louisiana. She got the brunt of it. could go Florida. That's the time when it hits the Gulf that you take your plan out and you're already done. You already know what you're going to do. Okay. You're going to listen to, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to listen to professional meteorologists. You're going to listen to them. Pick your favorite meteorologist from TV. I don't care who it is and stick with that person. Listen to the National Hurricane Center as far as where that storm's going to go and how dangerous it's going to ramp up. Listen to our wonderful Houston National Weather Service. We have the best National Weather Service, I swear, in the whole country. They are phenomenal. So we're going to listen to those three. We are not going to go onto Facebook and get somebody's opinion because they used to or they lived through or they heard what was going on. So we're going to stay off of social media that people who are not reliable. And I do have a funny story and it's called the avocado story. I was speaking to a group of people who were wheelchair users and I asked them, where do you get your information? And one woman said, well, I get it from the avocado man. <laughs> I'm like, what? And she says, yes, when I go into the store, and I'm not going to mention the name of the store, and she says, there's a man who's over in the produce, and he pinches the avocados, and the avocados tell him when a hurricane's going to come. That's not loud. And, and one time, he took like a weather class, like a long time ago, so he took one weather class, and he pinches the avocados, and then he predicts hurricanes. Wrong wrong. So that's an exaggerated, but it does happen. And, and the bottom line is, is people are listening to the wrong people about it. You have to prepare. You have to take care of yourself. You have to be responsible. You all know what you need to survive. You all know on a daily basis what you need to survive. So imagine in an emergency what you are going to need to survive plus extra. Okay, so you're going to make the plan. If you decide to stay home, and it's not a cat three, four, or five, because I guarantee you, if it's that much, you guys are going to get out of town, especially if you are dependent on electricity for anything. You are going to leave. You are not going to stay. You're not going to protect your house. Let's say you, you want to evacuate. So what do you do? I would call friends or family away from the area west, outside of the Houston area, and I would make plans with them and tell them, um, hi, Uncle Bubba, remember me? <laughs> I'm related to you. You used to know me, where I'm going to come. If a hurricane comes, I would like to come and shelter at your home. I would like to get out there. Um, I, have, I have somebody who could drive me out there. Um, I have a way to get out there. Um, and I really want to hunker and stay with you. So finding family and friends outside of the cone, because we all know the cone means that it's a probability that the hurricane can hit, let's say, anywhere from Corpus Christi to Houston or Freeport to Beaumont. That's your cone. Um, and you're going to want to get out. You're going to want to go west. And um, so you would, that's going to be one of, one of your major plans right now is to think, where would I go? Who would I stay with that I can feel that I can lead an independent life, a safe, independent life? Um, and I'll be safe from the flooding and I'll be safe from the wind. Uh, and I can just hunker there until the storm goes over. So if you could do that, you're going to make that plan right now. What are you going to take? Things that you need. You're going to take your important papers. You're going to take your medication if you're on it. You're going to take um, 
don't forget your masks because we have to do that nowadays. Uh, and any other essential things that you really need that you need every day. And you're gonna get a big plastic waterproof tub. Uh, I call mine the uh, happy tub. And you're gonna put all these things in the tub and you're gonna leave. You're gonna find somebody to drive you. You're gonna find somebody to get out of town. I know Galveston, I know we evacuate down here with buses uh, and you have to sign up for that. I know um, Galveston's really good at evacuating. And then you show up at the hub at the community center and that's the last resort and they will take you, I think, to Austin or San Antonio um, and they'll get you out. I know in the past Houston had hubs. I don't know how they're doing it now with the pandemic and that is something that I can find out for you and then send the information out to Stacy if there's going to be hubs this year. But the bottom line is, is you, you are responsible first and foremost on where you're going to go if you want to, to leave uh, your home. Now, if you stay at your home and you decide you're gonna stay at your home and throw a hurricane party, <laughs> and I'm laughing, um, you're gonna make sure that you have the essentials to, to get through, which is what? Your water, your food, your non-perishable foods, um, your can openers that are not electric, because you can't remember your electricity is gonna go out. So how are you gonna survive? You're gonna make sure that your phones are powered up I don't know if some of you, I know on my phone, I have a, um, a power, a, a battery powered uh, case that goes over my phone. I could send information to Stacy on that. And um, I use it when my phone starts to get low, you know, the battery starts to get low and then my battery pack, I just push a button in the back and, it, and it's the battery that helps keep it powered. I also suggest that between our hurricane season, uh, June, July, August, September is when we really get hit. That's really our major month to worry about, August and September, but all rules are off the table at this point, um, is that you keep your phone powered up like all the time, like all the time. Make sure your phone is powered up um, because we never know when that disaster is going to hit, just like when we had snowmageddon, how many people were out. Also, don't use your phone and text. If you text, that's going to help you save your battery on your phone. So those are, and I'm sure you have all really heard all this before, because I know personally I've talked about it for years, and I'm sure you've heard it. But you can hear it, but you've got to be active and do it. You've got to make these plans before that storm hits the gulf. All right, I'm going to say it again before it hits the Gulf, because you're going to then pull out your plan once it hits the Gulf and says, I'm ready. I'm prepared for anything that comes. I believe this year, the National Hurricane Center is going to give us 60 hours of warning, which is a whole lot more than they used to give us. So we can get that plan ready, make sure, keep our keep listening to um, our news sources, our, our weather sources. Um, uh, our weather sources. So we're gonna we're gonna once that storm hits the Gulf, boom, we're gonna start really being actively listening to proper weather reports. I have some wonderful news for you all today um, that I got from the mayor's office the other day. And I don't know, maybe some of you have gotten it also. Um, but I'm really excited about this. This comes down from uh, the Harris County Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Uh, in collaboration with the Houston Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, giving a shout out to them, and also Sight Into Sound. Okay, this year they have all gotten together and you can get your communication from Sight Into Sound. All right, so if you go- Amen. To, amen is right. So sightintosound.org, you go onto their website, and uh, let's see, um, and it's going to say, I, I went on it yesterday just to check it out for all y'all. And there's a part that says um, uh, emergency preparedness. And you just click that on and it's accessible. <coughs> and they're going to list everything, how to make a kit, how to make a plan, how to evacuate, the weather reports. It's like all in one. Um, it's the same thing they did for our friends in the deaf community with ASL. And um, Deb? Yeah, uh, this is Stacy. I'm going to interject Hi, real fast. Yeah. We are going to include this information with the survey that we send out. So fantastic. Uh, yes. So thank you for going over this. Yes, I'm, I'm really so excited 
that they are finally doing this because what is, what is the most important thing when the disaster hits? Communication. And if you are cut off from communication, you're making some lousy decisions because you don't know. You don't know where the hurricane is. You don't know. Then after the storm, you don't know where to get your, go to the pods to get your food and your water and da 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 da. You know, you should have it already in your home. Um, this is wonderful. This is going to tell you guys everything I'm saying and then more. Okay. So that's going to be your go to is sightintosound.org. That's going to be your go to to get all the information you need throughout our hurricane season. Okay, so I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Um, oh, yeah, sight into sound. They not only have that, they'll teach you how to make a plan. They have mental health support. Because really, after a storm, who isn't traumatized? Right? I mean, some of us are still traumatized from Carla back in 1960s. You know, we've been through it all. Um, they have pet preparedness. Because if you do evacuate and you do take your, your dog, your seeing eye dog, your guide dog, you're gonna have to take supplies for, for that, your dog and also vaccination papers with you, especially if you're gonna go to a shelter, to a last resort shelter like the George R. Brown or uh, where, wherever they open up shelters after the storm that they feel is safe. So you're gonna have to also take that too. So they're gonna prepare you for everything. They're gonna just take you down to help, take you down the list to help you make your plan because you're gonna make your plan. Because I'm gonna come back and ask you a hundred times, did you make your plan until November 30th? Y'all gonna be sick of me, but you gotta do it. All right, so if I can open up um, to questions, um, Stacy, can we do that if anybody has, I know somebody had some questions in the chat. Yeah, what so is, okay, here's share, wait, I was just gonna to get to the chat. Yep. It says, what is needed to totally prepare? I'm in Central Texas, ah, between Austin and Waco. You guys uh, you guys get some flooding, don't you? Uh, you guys really get some flooding over there in Central Texas, and you also get snow. So it's the same thing as really hurricanes. Make sure that your home is prepared, that you have food, that you have non-perishable foods. Um, if there is flooding, know your flood zone. That's another thing we're pushing out this year. Know your flood zone. Listen, flooding isn't just for Galveston anymore, y'all. Because let's talk about Harvey. We had 60 inches of rain in Harvey. My area got like 58 inches, something we were two inches short of the record. Um, but so did Memorial. And so did Meyerland. So our flooding now is widespread. It's not just for Galveston anymore. So if you flooded in the past, please know, please be aware that maybe your area might flood again, and that might help you decide whether you want to evacuate or stay there, right? Remember, you know what you need more than anybody, more than a county judge, more than blah, 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 even though we do listen to them, you know what you need to sustain an independent, safe life. So if you are in a flooding area, if your area flooded before, if you don't feel comfortable staying in your place and you have a place to go, may I suggest you leave? And you don't have to worry about it. So my Central Texas people, again, if you know of some place that you can go and get out, you don't got you guys get maybe an aftermath of our hurricanes. You might get the tail if it comes in through Corpus Christi, Central, you know, Austin, San Antonio will get will get some of the rain and some of, but not as hard as we're going to get hit. But Cheryl, you should do the same things we're doing here. Make a plan. Make sure you've got preparedness. Make sure you've got battery operated. Radios, battery operated, cell phones, um, anything that can get you through for communication. Okay, Cheryl also says uh, texting was the only sense of communication during snowmageddon. You were right, texting was. Texting was the only way we could get through. God, that was a nightmare. Uh, and this is Stacy. Stacy, go on. One thing that I will say for for people on here because sometimes people who are blind and low vision they think that there's no need to have flashlights. I would strongly encourage you to have a flashlight, whether you need it or not. If you're getting, you're having to get rescued, maybe your neighbors need um, these kinds of uh, uh, preparedness things. It, it's a good idea to try to be a good neighbor. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Chuck. Um, Sight and Sound Org, it's both in English and Spanish. Thank you, Chuck. Yes, it's it's wonderful. It's really it's such, it's the best thing since sliced bread, really. And Karen um, has a hand raised. Karen, yes. Hi, Karen. Do you have a question, hon? I am late. I apologize. Um, I got stuck in a meeting for my ACB. Um, I want to let y'all know that for Houston and Galveston, our season starts August 15th through September 5th, 25th. I learned that from a person that works for a building contractor. That used yeah. to be my... Karen, that's Karen. That's true. That's true. Um, it our season in Texas goes from August fifteenth to September twenty fifth, but with the change. And last year we had thirty storms. Oh, you know, anything can happen. I don't want you to prepare August fourteenth. I want you to prepare now for this upcoming. Right, I, I do that year round with me. Oh, and, but yeah. I do have a question about general. Since I'm, I mean, in a different situation than I talk to you, when I talk to you last, I have one of those built into the house generators. Oh, great. Do you think those might go down during a hurricane? The generators? Gener I don't think. Is it, what is it, gas or it's electric or gas? Did you say it's electric, it's built in? It shouldn't. That's why people are getting them, to depend on them. Karen, are you still there? Yeah. I, I love mine. I, can, I have never been through a hurricane with it yet, but. Mm -hmm. Just wait. <laughs> It'll come. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. I mean, I love these homes that are being built and people are going and getting these built in generators. I, I just think the future is now. I, I think every home I wish would have one. Be great. Thank you, Karen. Tell us, hey, in the next hurricane, tell us how it did, okay? Will you come back and give us a report on how it did? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I want, I'm going to, I'm going to, even though I already know this stuff, I want to show up at your other meetings that you said you're going to have, just because I show up at all these things as much as you're I can. You're wonderful. And, well, you sound, Karen, very prepared. Okay, so Cheryl is asking, Cheryl's my, my question person, what papers do you recommend we take? Okay, I will grab my person recorder and my flutes if possible. That's great, honey, but you still need insurance. You still need, um, your identification, anything that can identify you, because some cities, when you come back, when you are allowed to return, when it is safe to return, when when our local emergency managers go, yes, you can return to Seabrook, or yes, you can return here or there, you might have to show ID. So you're going to take your ID, you're going to take your important papers, you're going to take your medical papers. If you do have some medical information you want to take along, you are going to take your guide dog's information also. So, you know, whatever vaccination papers they have, you're going to want to take that. If you have children, you want to take their information. You know, maybe they have vaccination cards. I, I know they used to have them back in the day. I, I might be dating myself. But, and you're going to take your passports. If you have passports, you are going to take anything that is precious, that you don't want the rain to get. I take my family Bible. I put that in my happy tub. Uh, I take things that are not replaceable. The family Bible is not replaceable. So what do I do? I put it in the happy tub. Uh, and anything that <coughs> will, um, will be important to me, that will help me with insurance, that would help me with, with identification, that will help me with medical needs. That goes in the happy tub. That is your waterproof big tubs. Uh, that's the papers that, and yes, of course, you can grab your purse and your recorder and your flutes, of course, uh, but the papers that identify and that are life-sustaining to you, you're gonna take. You're gonna take your flood insurance papers. If you do have flood insurance, anything like that, you're gonna take with you. Okay, just in case. Yes, flashlights are essential. Uh, um, I'm just reading from the chat, guys. Uh, because you might get stuck up on the third floor and you're gonna have, and if you have to get rescued, that flashlight is gonna draw attention. You know, that is a lifesaver. That is a lifesaver. Okay, is there any other questions? Any other questions? Come on. Comment. I'm sorry, what? I have a comment. Okay, make a comment. I have a weather radio that one of my friends 
um, acquired as a gift, and I liked her. I told her I wanted to see her to make sure I could use it. It is not quote unquote accessible as far as reading the oh. station identifications are concerned, but it's little. And if you put it on the weather radio, you just turn that, there's just two knobs on it and an antenna. And it's a solar powered radio from Amazon. And they're excellent for us. Yes, it is. Um, make sure you get the right county. Sometimes these weather radios will go off and the county will be like in West Texas or something. So they're wonderful uh, weather radios. But nowadays, we can get weather apps really from any of our local stations. I have it on my phone. Too. Yeah. That's the other. One. Other. Absolutely. It cost me five dollars and forty four cents. Go to Noah Weather Radio on your yeah. on your phone and uh, request it. And it's the exact same radio <laughs> as the as the portable one. Hey Karen. Your phone. And, and, yes. Hey Karen, we're gonna continue moving on because I think Deb probably has lots of material in a short amount of time. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, for uh, Thanks, Stacy. I did want to read um, one key question I feel is key because I wonder this myself and someone in the chat asked what foods do you recommend okay so um it's non-perishable foods that you're going to put in your in your home you're going to put your peanut butter in your jelly you're going to get your bread you're going to get meats that you that you might be able to not have to cook your tuna you can get your tuna fish anything that's canned um should be in your closet in your food closet um I started already gathering uh, my canned foods for the season, believe it or not. And I do have one shelf uh, in my food closet that is for emergency preparedness. So I have all my foods that will sustain uh, and can stay there and, and would be good. That doesn't have to be prepared or cooked up. Um, if you do have some meats you want to cook up before the storm hits and you're going to stay home and you have a place to keep it cool, um, you know, fry that up, broil that up, get that meat going, put it in, put it in something that could keep it fresh and then eat it as fast as you can. But anything that comes in a can, anything that, that is non-perishable, uh, I would put uh, on your shelf, on your emergency preparedness shelf. You also need a lot of water. Got to fill up your bathtub because you might have to flush your toilets and wash and you're going to use that bathtub water for not drinking, but for other essential things, maybe bathing, you're, you're flushing your toilets. So your, your tubs are going to be filled. Then you're going to have water to drink and you're going to have a whole bunch. They say, uh, you know, water for three days. Now you're going to have water for longer than that because then they're going to say, what happens after that? After three days, they go, well, we have a boil water for your area get as much water as you can. Start buying your water now and just stacking it up. I just keep, every time I go to the store, I buy more water and I just stack it up, buy more water. And that's the, the during Snowmageddon, we had so much water. Uh, now I'm low because we used it for Snowmageddon and now I'm starting to pack again. So now when you go to the store, pick up that extra can of tuna, pick up, you know, something that can sustain you, something that is non-perishable foods that you can eat. Does that answer your question, Terrence? Does that help? Oh yeah, it was in the chat. It wasn't my question specifically, but I yeah. had the same one. <laughs> okay. Raul here, I've got a Oh, it says what foods you're um, uh, Do you mean a plastic tub for the happy tub? Yeah, it's a waterproof. I just get one of those Tupperware, those big, big ones. Um, uh, that's my happy tub. I just call it the happy tub. And I can grab it and leave within 20 minutes. I mean, I could get out of my house. If I had to evacuate, boom, I'm out. I'm out because I usually keep all of my stuff in there all year round. So I, I know where my insurance is, my passport is, you know, Gracie, my cat stuff. Uh, it's all in there. And if I had to get out in 20 minutes, I'm like, bye y'all. I'm out. Bye. And, and Ra I can Raul has a question. Raul, I'm sorry. Hi there. It's Raul here. I had a, a comment. Something that we learned uh, during the Snowmageddon is that, uh, especially when it comes to flushing the toilet or whatever, yeah. that it's, all, it's also a good idea if you have an extra pitcher. Um, not everybody thinks of having that kind of stuff. So having either a, an empty, you know, a gallon that you can refill, but specifically a pitcher. So in case you just need to dish water out of your, um, your tub, to do that, it'll go very smoothly. So it, it, it's it's practical and not everybody thinks about just having a pitcher laying around. That's true. That's very, very true. Having the pitcher around there. Yeah, because you well, how else you're gonna get it, you know, with your exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you still be scooping. Yeah. 
uh, yeah, so so that's important. Um, how many of you have places to go? Oh, Laura, I'm sorry, Laura, go on. Laura, your question, please. Laura, I am calling upon you. Hello? Laura, he hello? You have to unmute, hon. Um, okay, I think that- Oh, there you go, Laura. Okay, what's your question, Laura? Okay, um, we mentioned our guide dogs, which we can take them anywhere, but what about our, what can we do about our pet dogs? Uh, take them with you, as long as you have uh, food for them and as long as you have vaccination papers to show. Most shelters do take in those animals. Now, let me tell you something. When you bring in your guide dog, that's the law. That's the federal law. You cannot be separated. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot be separated from that dog. I don't care what anybody says. You cannot be separated from that dog. Your other little dog, little fluffy and, and maybe your goldfish. I mean, people have shown up with their goldfish. Um, that <laughs> might be, to, I swear to God, they've shown up with their goldfish. Um, that might be taken to a separate area in the shelter. That might be some shelters do have separate areas that they put their pets, but that's okay. As long as you have it in its little cage, you know, uh, your, your pet has to be secured. Um, they'll put it in a different place and you're gonna bring your food with it. But your guide dog cannot be separated from you. I cannot tell you how many people come back to me and say, oh, you know what? They separated me from my guide dog. Well, no, wrong. And sometimes these volunteers don't know the law that well, but you know the law and you're gonna stand up for you and your guide dog, okay? All right, uh, Liz, you have a question. Hi, yes, thanks so much for doing this presentation and I especially appreciate your avocado man story um, and that we <laughs> you should use good you. sources. <laughs> um, Love it. Yes, um, I just wanted to super quickly share a resource that's been really helpful for me for for getting weather um i've noticed as a blind person i think it's kind of harder to get like hourly information about weather sometimes because you're not able to like look at the doppler screen that they're showing on the weather reports um and if folks are interested in more weather information nfb newsline is a really good resource um i use it quite frequently for the hourly breakdown where you can see you know the storm is going to start closer to 11 p.m. or it's going to break up, you know, at 6 a.m. Um, so Stacy maybe can send out how you guys can register for that free service with the, the notes if that's possible. But that's fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. I know um, I had talked to um, when I was a commissioner back in the day um, and I was talking to some of the weather or weather people who do the weather on our, our local stations. And I told them, when you point to the map and go there, the storm's gonna be there. Well, I said to our folks who are visually impaired, what does there mean? Is it Nebraska? Is it not? where? What, what is it? You have to label what is going on. So if you're gonna say there's potential for the storm to come in Freeport, say Freeport, don't just point and go there because that's not gonna help. Right? So I'm, I'm really glad, Liz, you brought that up where you can get the hourly report and, and, and that's a great source too. That's wonderful. And I think they're getting better, our meteorologists. Uh, you guys can tell me uh, as far as really pinpointing and describing and labeling exactly where the storms are gonna come into with a name, the name mm -hmm. behind it. Alyssa, you have a question? Alyssa, you wanna unmute? Alyssa? Okay, well, Ned? Yeah, yeah, this is Ned. Thank you for the presentation. Two oh. quick questions. I live in central Texas near Austin. Oh, ooh, ooh, keep it what, weird. Yes. <laughs> what size is your happy box? Oh, it's the biggest tub I could practically carry. It's deep and it's wide. It's deep and it's big. So imagine it's like the biggest tub I can get. Um, and I'm not really sure with the exact size. I could go measure it and then, then send it off to Stacy. but it's deep and it's wide. It's deep enough for me because every year it seems that I'm adding more things. Okay, okay. My, sec my second question is, uh, when I've been in line at the grocery store, 
to get my uh, products before to be prepared, you know, before the storm. You mentioned toilet paper earlier. What (laughs) is it with paper towels? A lady in front of me, she must have had 30 rolls of paper towels. What's that all about? I guess that's just in case she's going to be mopping up her floor with the flood. Okay. (laughs) I don't know what else you would need, you know, probably for that. Probably Because the guys behind me, they had their basket full of tequila and beer. Now, those are the guys I want to hang with. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, I think maybe she wanted to clean before, maybe flooding. She was worried about flooding, you know, paper towels. It's good to have, but you, you don't, have, you know, I'm, what I'm trying to tell you all is if you start, if you start preparing now, a little bit at a time, okay, just a little bit at a time, and you have a storage area or you have room that you can designate it for my preparedness stuff. You're not going to have to end up panicking at the end and standing in line with people who are hoarding 30 to 40 whatever and all the tequila and beer. Um, you're, you're already going to have that sense of somewhat of a security. Do you see and what we, I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and we were able to get Elisa unmuted. Okay. I'm sorry. Elisa, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing okay. So you. You mentioned something about meds, right? Is it? Do you take them with you in your purse, or do you put them somewhere separate? Um, I'm glad you brought that up about medication. One of my favorite things is if you have something like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If it comes yeah. in braille, it mm-hmm. does. Um, what I would do is I would, if possible, separate those meds into each day. Yeah, yeah. If you can, um, that would be great. Um, and don't mix that with your partner's pills or grandpa's pills or whatever, or separate, separate. Because mm-hmm. I've had people go, well, you know, I just put it in with grandpa's and, you know, we go by the, you know, whatever. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was my question because I take meds and I'm like, I don't want to mix it with my mom's headache pills. Thank you. Yes. And you're going to separate that. Okay. You ain't going to take your mama's pills and she ain't going to take yours. So you can either put it in that separate Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday thing. If it comes in Braille, that helps you. Or you can just grab it and put it in plastic baggies put your medication in baggies uh but you must take your medication with you now i know if you're going to evacuate sometimes you might ask your doctor especially in august and the september times as Mm -hmm. a friend was saying about this is the the times that we really have to be on alert yeah uh you could say uh can i get a prescription a 30-day prescription or 60-day prescription um, during hurricane season or whatever, and they might do that. That's something if if your doctor says that's okay, um, might give you some extra just to, just you know so you have it if you are if we're stuck in a horrible hurricane and a disaster afterwards. Mm-hmm. But that's something you should talk to about with your doctor about asking about that for preparedness. What about like generators? Because we have two generators at our home. We do have two. We have two. And- I'm coming to stay with you. Yeah, we got two. We got a small one and we got a big generator. Are those good to use? <laughs> the generators? You're talking my about dad, the outdoor? My dad always has them and he always puts gas. He pumps yes. those things up like crazy whenever we see that there's a storm coming. Yeah, the gas generators are good. Um, they're loud. <laughs> yeah, they are, but they help. They're loud. They're very loud, but they're wonderful. Listen, if it can keep the lights on, if it can keep your refrigerator going, Mm -hmm. um, that's a good thing. We used ours during Snowmageddon uh, for our our, um, refrigerator and we Mm -hmm. saved our food. I mean, that really saved our food. Because I remember when Snowmageddon came, we brought my grandma over. Yeah, we're we're going to... I'm going to move on to Chuck's. Um, Sorry, Chuck Stacey. has a. That's it's okay. okay. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Um, if you bring a pet to a Red Cross shelter, also bring a pet carrier, which I had said you have to bring your pet. It has to be in a carrier. A cat litter box, favorite pet toy blank. Exactly. Just like you would bring for a child. Uh, your name is uh, bring a current photo with you with your pet too. That's a good that's a good idea. I have a tuxedo cat. They're very common. The black and white cats. You might want to take a picture of your photo and go, no, this is my cat. This is not my cat because here's the picture of it, da, da, da. So you, if you do shelter, you want to take a picture. Thank you. Very good. 
Uh, Raul says, for device charging, battery banks are better than cases. Okay, the 20K capacity ones are good. Whatever works, Raul, whatever works, whatever you want to use. If you want to use uh, the battery banks or the cases, whatever floats your boat gets you through. Absolutely. You know, with so much technology going on today, there's so many ways now we can connect and keep things going. So being on top of that, and again, doing it before the storm hits the Gulf. So what am I saying to y'all? Now, get ready. Now, start investigating, start researching, uh, start making your plans. I want you guys to get through this preparedness season without panicking. So many people panic at the last minute, and that's where we get into trouble. Right, Stacy, with a comment. Yes. So one, a couple of other things that people may not think of. Um, if you are a guide dog user, you really should also have with you a cane. Um, if you're blind, that is. And also, um, if you are in a situation where you may need to be rescued in a boat, that has happened to people. A uh, good thing to have on hand might be a whistle. So yeah. you can alert people where you are. If you get a vest too. Okay, I'm gonna, um, before we end, I, um, I hope this all helped you, you all, I really do. Um, just want you guys to make right decisions. I want you to make decisions for you because you know yourself better than anybody else. I want you to be empowered and I want you to feel that your choices are the choices that are gonna keep you safe, okay? So now we're gonna have a little weather quiz, all right? Before we end, I know all you weather geeks out there, and I know you're out there. Uh, what's a watch when they say, uh, we're under a hurricane watch? What's a watch? Anybody? What's a watch? Okay, Ned, you, you raised your hand first. What is a watch? Okay, a watch is where... Now, Karen, is, I called on Ned. Okay, Karen. I'm sorry. Sorry. Ned? Okay, Karen, you might as well take it. You're, you're, you're unmuted. Karen? Um. It is the watch. It's not here yet. But Am I unmuted? Me. I'm unmuted. Okay. She said, well, hang on a minute, Ned. Yeah. Karen said a watch is that what? It's potential. There's a potential. There's a possibility, right? It's kind yeah. of heads up, y'all. It's heads right. up. Yes. Yes. Heads up. Okay. Right. Ned, Ned, I'm going to let you answer the next one, Ned. What's a warning? A warning means that uh, there has been a, a tornado or something uh, in the area it's higher than a watch. It's more serious than a watch. Exactly. A warning means that we're, we're beyond the potential and possibility. It's y'all heads up. It's coming. That's the warning. All right. It is coming. Okay. Uh, Chuck, I'm going to give you this one, Chuck. If you want to play, do you want to unmute Chuck? What's surge? Anybody know what surge is? Chuck, do you know what surge is? Storm, storm surge is where the water gets pushed up from the Gulf up into uh, land areas. And that can be, you know, two, three, four feet up into it. And that is the highest area that is at risk of flooding is from storm surge. Exactly. And surge kills, doesn't it, Chuck? Absolutely. I think that, that is a number one killer is the surge. And if is, you live along Galveston Bay, especially yes, Galveston yeah. Bay and up into Baytown, that's where a lot of those areas that are on land are at high risk of flooding. I, I can testify. I can give you a testimony on that. Um, and, 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 and I just crack up. The surge is coming in, uh, very dangerous. It kills and people are like, let's go take some pictures down in Galveston of the waves. What? <laughs> What? No, 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 no. Do not do that. No, we got to go. I got one for the memory book. Now you ain't going to have no memory, honey, because that's just going to come get you. So the surge kills. So by the time we have the surge, we'll be out of be out of that area, be out of that flooding if you are in that flooding zone. Do you know if you're in a flood zone? Uh, Y'all people in Galveston, Galveston Bay, I guess nowadays, I guess we're all up for flooding, right? <laughs> so you know ah, so what are you gonna do you're gonna you're gonna watch the weather you're gonna make a decision that's best for you you're gonna get your plan out you're gonna decide what you're gonna do so let's wrap up what are we gonna do guys we're gonna make a plan and we're gonna get serious because they're calling for an above average season again regardless if it hits texas or not we're gonna be prepared you can wait around let's talk about laura 
Hurricane Laura. She was a beast. She was a cat four. That's what hit the, that's the 1900 Galveston storm was a four that killed 10,000 people or more. Laura was a four. She was taking the same path as the 1900. So people in Galveston were like, uh-uh, we ain't gonna do this again. <laughs> oh, oh no. Um, so we evacuated because at one point, the, mod, the weather models were pointing it to Houston, the Galveston area, which would have been devastating. At the last moment, unfortunately, it hit Lake Charles. And those little communities along the Gulf of Mexico, Creole City and whatnot, they're gone. I mean, they're somewhere in Nebraska at this point. It was a beast. She was a cat four. People weren't prepared because why? They thought it was going to come to Texas. And she came really close to us. She came like 40 miles off of Bolivar. I mean, she was pretty close. I think Bolivar took some of it. So the people in Lake Charles at the last minute, and this was last minute, they said, we're going to get out of here, which caused gridlock. A lot of them came to San Antonio. I was in San Antonio at that time because I evacuated and I saw people literally lining around the blocks of hotels trying to get a room because it was a last minute thing and they weren't prepared. And unfortunately, it was devastating to them. But I think uh, Louisiana got hit seven times, something like that. They just were in the crosshair. It was terrible. So prepare, guys, prepare, prepare now. Get your plan together. Talk to people if you want to evacuate. Start building up your, your kit. Start building up, if you do stay home, your water and your, your food that is non-perishable. Get your little shelf together, make your plan. Uh, your weather radios or however technology you want. Don't forget sightintosound.org. There's so many ways now we can stay connected and I want you to connect into it and I want you to make the right choices for your life. Okay, it's your life. Make those right choices. I'm going to take a couple more questions. Anthony, Anthony, you have a question? Anthony, got your hand raised. Anthony. Yeah, uh, so I have, a, I have a comment yes. for everyone. Mm -hmm. Every year, we the National Weather Service does Skywarn training. Yes. And it's open to the public. And I highly recommend, because I'm also an amateur radio operator. And for those of you that they may not know, um your cell phone or i should say your your power is going to go out you're going to lose your tvs you can lose your internet you're going to lose your cell phones if the cell phone towers go out for those of you that have thought about maybe becoming an amateur radio operator that could be your last means of the commit defense or communication because a lot of the um people use amateur radio operators to communicate to the media and to public service and whatnot um but it's something to think about thank you anthony for what you do and you're right you are like the first defense or the last defense of keeping everybody um alert and um mm -hmm. skywarn is wonderful again our national weather service they're phenomenal absolutely phenomenal um thank you anthony for what you do appreciate it and it is a good idea if you want to get involved and be a radio opera um i ham radio operator it's wonderful again that's empowerment so deb we want to thank you again on on behalf Pleasure. of haven and everybody oh, stacy and I, I wanted to get this in just because of how poignant this um comment chuck left is in the uh chat because a lot of people did die from carbon monoxide poisoning yeah. during um I did stay outside right <clears throat> during yeah during snowmageddon and he said if you have a portable gasoline power generator it must be kept outside and not in your garage or inside your house because it is the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning we saw that a lot during snowmageddon yeah yep. we did outside guys yeah and thank you for that um so Deb, thank you so much for your time. I know Saturdays are a precious commodity and we appreciate you spending part of yours with us. Um, I thank you all for having me and I hope it helped. It, I it absolutely it gave, did, yep. Gave you things to think about. Um, it seems that this group is very much on top of it and I really appreciate that. And um, I thank you again and I really wish you all a safe hurricane or no, no rain, no name rain. <laughs> right. Season. season. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I thank you again. I really okay. do. Okay. Um, so as is the tradition, we tip, we give a door prize at the end of the workshop. 
And today's door prize is going to be a $25 uh, Amazon gift card that is being donated by Haven. And so um, you must be present to win. And Terrence or Raul, I will ask one of you to verify this. Um, the, the first number is number 22, and that would be Michael McCulloch. So Ooh. is sure Michael. I saw Michael. Don't see him on. Okay. And then the next number is number 47, and that is Cheryl Goodnight. I know I saw her on. I, I see, see her on. Well, she here. said she had to go. But she's still here, though. Oh, I she? see her there. Oh, okay. yep. sorry. At uh, one point, I thought she said she's sorry. So, Cheryl, you are the winner of today's lucky prize, and uh, Ron will be getting with you to coordinate that. Um, one final remark is I want to remind everybody that our final um, Haven uh, Zoom get together for we're going to take the month of July off because uh, we 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 deserve a break here at Haven. Um, but we are going to have a, a gathering on June 26th from 5 to 7 p.m. It's going to be kind of a social um, time with games, um, may make some tasty treats. Um, so stay tuned for information about that. And again, I want to thank everybody for coming today and great participation. Yes, definitely you. probably the most participation we've had in a while <laughs> you guys are awesome today well that just means you guys are going to be prepared and you might, be, you might be able to help somebody else so all right everybody be safe and with that we're going to sign off bye goodbye bye.